welcome to the Sussex Football Show with me, Dean Kilford, and powered by your instant replay. Whitehawk versus Lewis, last time these two teams faced each other was back in Whitehawk's title winning season. And the man in charge is now in charge of the Rooks, the visiting manager Darren Freeman, returning to the club for the first time since he left the club. Plenty of travelling fans made the short journey. Here's Dane Benwin. Across to the back post, there's a free header. He's just past the post. Ronnie Conlon coming in at the back. First chance of the game. Whitehawk, they were camped in the Lewis half. They've been forced all the way back, and that's a just gone wide. Minter was a long way out of his goal. Out to Brinkhurst. Lawson made a good run on ahead of him instead. There's space here for Lawson. He takes aim, fires over the top. Then Ben Wynn. Slip. He cuts it back. Must be Shirley. Takes his time. And Omar Lawson took too long. Danger's not over yet. Eventually, Whitehawk players get back and can launch a counter of their own. Sissime finding Rodriguez. Little layer from Mugridge. And here goes the chance at powerful run. Sisimei, ball just came away from him when he looked to shoot. Little step over and he takes Brinkhurst down and just over hits the cross. Danger at both ends there. There is again called out on the break. That had to be handball, is it? And it's a penalty. Good with an outrageous decision to stick his arm out when the cross went over his head. The referee Ivan Gelov with no alternative but to point to the spot. And John T. Smith has the opportunity to score his eighth goal of the season. It's Smith versus Minter, who has saved a couple of penalties this season. In front of the Lewis fans. It's Smith, and he sends the keeper the wrong way, and Lewis take the lead. John T. Smith with his eighth goal from the penalty spot. would be one that Aaron Good will want to forget. Needless decision to handle the ball. And just as Whitehawk were coming into this game, they found themselves behind. It's again a loose pass from the captain. There's a chance for Rodriguez to run. Rodriguez, has he just overrun that? He hasn't, he's got his shot away! Oh! And whether it was a cross or a shot, the sliding man. In fact, it was Jason Williams who was sliding in. He couldn't get a touch. And Whitehawk almost instantly responds. Now Muggeridge. Rodriguez. Rodriguez turns and takes on Reeves and goes down. Referee points to the spot. It was a needless change from Reed who did lean into the forward. And it's the second penalty of the game at the same end. It's Jason Williams looking for his fifth of the season up against Lewis Carey who did save a penalty on Saturday. Quiet falls over the ground as Williams. Sees his spot kick go wide past the post. He holds his head in his hands. And Lewis get a reprieve. Poor penalty. Right past the upright. The ball's over the top and Williams. Williams going. Will he make amends? Oh, and it's just wide again. And Captain Muggeridge. He goes quick. And it's headed. Oh, what a save that is. Ed Sanders got his head on it. Lewis Carey there. And that's the final action of the game. A tale of two penalties. One scored by Johnty Smith in the first half. One missed by his opposite number, Jason Williams, in the second. An even game settled by fine margins. And that's the way it's finished. The Rooks go home with all three points. Final score, Whitehawk nil. Lewis won. Burgess Hill Town were playing their fourth home game in a row in all competitions and the team propping up the Boston Premier League faced the daunting prospect of facing high-flying Dorking Wanderers. After an uneventful first 20 minutes, it was the visitors who almost took the lead, Tom Tolfrey's shot deflecting wide. Burgess Hill's first chance of the first half was a free kick from Ben Pope, his firm strike straight at the keeper.
The Hillians were on the front foot in the second half. This move led to a shot by Andre McCollin. If only Pat Harding could have got more in his deflected effort. At the other end, Tom Richards surely had to score when Josh James Parry left him with a gaping net. Burgess Hill survived. Ben Pope then had the chance to win the game late on. Buck came out to block his first effort before the rebound flashed across the face of goal. So Burgess Hill Town remained bottom but put on a very convincing performance against a strong Dorking side. It's now only one defeat in five for the Hillians. Whitehawk have been putting in good performances without getting results in recent games and must have fancied their chances when Harlow Town came to the Terrapura ground, a team they'd already beaten on this ground at the very first day of the season. It was the home team who started strongly, Sissa May denied by a fine save. Sissa May was again involved in the build-up that led to this vicious effort from Connor Tai. It was all Whitehawk and Goode was inches away with this flick header. In 25 minutes, the Hawks got the goal they deserved. Good build-up play released Muggeridge, who squared the ball for Sissime to stroke the ball home for his first of the season. With half an hour to go, out of nowhere, Harlow equalised. The ball ricocheting off Aqua before Hitchcock tapped in from barely a yard. Whitehawk thought they were back in front just a couple of moments later. The referee's assistant correctly denying Rodriguez his follow-up. Things then went from bad to worse as Corinting found himself behind the defence and he made no mistake as he poked the ball past Minter to give Harlow the lead. Aqua had a hand in the first goal but he sealed this tie when he brought down a long clearance and curled the ball into the corner, giving the keeper no chance. From the restart, Whitehawk gave themselves a lifeline. Calm build-up play saw the ball squared across the six-yard box and Ed Sanders of all people was there to slide the ball home. The Hawks were pressing for an equaliser and would have one final chance when Rodriguez was bundled over on the edge of the area. James Fraser's effort was too high and Whitehawk's dreams of Wembley via the FA Trophy are over for another season. FA Trophy action, Bedford Hill Town versus Worthing, beautiful derby. What a day for it at the Green Elephant Stadium. A little setback, Cadman with the early cross, Pope with the early header, just over the top. So an interesting tactic from this corner. Bedford Hill Town have left four players up looking for the quick break. So that corner's drifting low and over the top from Joe Clark. Strong foot in from Beck and Pope could be in. And this is the chance he's been looking for against his former club. It's Pope saved by the feet of Pernpio. Parsons, though, it's low into the corner. It takes a good save again. A double save from the new goalkeeper. A first time effort. Not bad. Pat Harding, foot or so wide. Wilson's corner towards the near post. Fixed by Pamant. And it's come off the post. I think it took a deflection on its way through. Second cross in, free header over the top. Actually, boy, no offside flag up. Rance gets the cross in, volley, and it's gone in. Who went through the hands of James, who's been a stalwart in the Hillians nets so far this season. But Ollie Pierce has opened the scoring for Worthing against the run of play. It was a firm effort, but one that shouldn't have beat a keeper of James's quality. Wilson's. Floating ball in. Pope does get his head on it, and the keeper has to tip it over. Barker gets a low cross in. Held up by Harding, and it took a great save. Harding with a spectacular. 
corner underneath the goalkeeper to the back post. That's a free header. And the captain will feel he should have done better there. And there's space at the byline for low cross. And it's Pierce again. And he should have made it too. Nice little flick to Aguayar. Gets a touch. Ajiboy, Aguayar. Back to Ajiboy. Great tackle from Diallo. Lovely ball out to Smith Joseph. He gets across in Pamant. 1 1. He scores against his former club. Could to come as no surprise. Worthing's top goal scorer last year comes back to haunt them. Once again, a goal that came from nothing. And Burdensfield Town deservedly get themselves level. And that is indeed how it finishes. Kieran Parent comes back to haunt his former club. And it's no more than Burdensfield Town deserve. In truth, a relatively even contest. A full-time score here at the Green Elephant Stadium. With a replay looming on Tuesday nights. It's Burdensfield Town 1, Worthing 1. AFC Vandinians were top of the table and unbeaten as they welcomed Stilling Town to the Withdean Stadium. It was a tight contest that you'd probably expect with the league's two meanest defences facing off. The first opportunity fell to AFC Vandinians, with the Stilling defender almost turning Waterman's free kick past his keeper. Another set piece saw Oliver Blackman free at the far post, his header needing to be saved. Chances seem to only come from set pieces and Stenning should have scored here at the start of the second half. And it looked destined to finish goalless but that was until Lewis Lavoy managed to get his head on the end of this free kick to break the deadlock with a minute to go. Goal won it for Stelling. AFC Vandinians remain top, but Stelling Town are now third, just four points of the top with a game in hand. Thank you for watching the Sussex Football Show. I've been Dean Kilford, and we'll be back next week with all the best of Sussex football, powered by your instant replay.